Uh, let's join uh, Shiva Kumar, I think, if he's ready. Shiva? Every day, a large number of people, both children and adults, experience medical intervention and care at Triple M. They walk in through the doors of Triple M as patients and walk out with a new lease on life. The Madras Medical Mission Hospital, since 1987, has been synonymous with excellence in patient care and quality medical treatment at an affordable cost. And it continues to draw a large number of patients from various stratas of the society. The Institute of Cardiovascular Diseases, ICVD, at Triple M, has many firsts to its credit, including the first adult and pediatric heart transplantation in the private sector, percutaneous pulmonary valve implantation, first bilateral lung transplantation, first ROS procedures, first Batista procedure, and so on. The Institute is made up of several departments, including departments for adult and pediatric cardiology and surgery, and a department for cardiac rehabilitation. It is also home to some of the finest cardiac specialists in India. The catheterization lab at the Cardiovascular Diseases Department is a state-of-the-art facility that brings in a multidisciplinary team of doctors. It is here that diagnostic angiographic procedures and therapeutic interventional procedures are performed. With every surgery performed, with every patient treated, the Cardiovascular Diseases Department at Triple M reinforces its commitment to its missionary values. Every patient that comes in for treatment at the department, from a day-old baby to a 90-year-old, is an opportunity to further the Madras Medical Mission's goal of reaching out to the unreached. Good afternoon, Shiva. We can see you. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. So uh, I have uh, uh, my colleague, Dr. Pramod, uh, uh, with me uh, starting the case. And I have Srija, uh, my long-term associate for imaging, assisted by Dr. Rohit Raj. And Dr. Ashish, uh, one of our senior fellow, will now present the case. There was a ch minor change because of the COVID-related uh, uh, scheduling differences. We are going to be showing a patient who has uh, large aorta right, left atrial fistula uh, post mitral valve replacement. Dr. Ashish, can you show the PowerPoint presentation? It's a 50-year-old uh, male. Uh, he was diagnosed to have a RSD and severe MR. Developed Is it uh, audible check? Uh, yes, yes. OK. Developed a culture positive infected with endocarditis and treated for six weeks with appropriate antibiotics. Uh, underwent a mitral valve replacement with 30 mo 31 millimeter biochar valve. Uh, intraoperative TE saw some abnormal flows from aortic root to LA, but it was accepted as a sutural parallel leak. Uh, on repeat, th post operative day, day three, they confirmed that it's a outer to LA fistula. He is post operatively, he is having developed an NOHA class two, progressive pericardial effusion, pleural effusion, and congestive heart failure, on a hi recurring hydrosis of diuretic. On examination, weight is 69.7 kg. Um, blood pressure is 10 by 60 millimeter mercury. Pedal edema is present, JVP is elevated, cardiomegaly. Continuous murmur in the left upper sternal border, uh, loud P2. Excess word right pillar effusion, sternal words are present, dilated LA and cardiomegaly. ECG showed sinus rhythm, left axis deviation with left atrial enlargement and prominent left ventricular forces. Echo showed uh, right pillar effusion and uh, pericardial effusion with dilated LV. On color doppler, there is mild tear, and uh, on five, apical 5 channel view, we can see the uh, outer to LA fistula. On long axis view, it is shown that uh, it's from uh, the NCC to the LA. Uh, it's measures around 8 to 9 millimeter in uh, size, and there is a continuous flow from uh, uh, to LA. The short axis also confirms the same defect. We performed a T. This is the apical four chamber. This is the four chamber view, which showed the uh, fistula. Short axis also uh, just explain in the short axis <coughs> and long axis, which is showing the fistula also. This is the 3D echo, which showed the fistula in from the NCC to the uh, LA. Now, while uh, performing the surgery, after the uh, the suture has been passed from the LA to the NCC and <coughs> it has come back, so after the putting the valve, the fistula has been created. So the final diagnosis was post mitral replacement of the bioprosthesis valve. Uh, there is a LA uh, tissue uh, uh, weakened by previous staphylococcus endocarditis. Outer to LA fistula, postoperatively, 
heart failure, there is mild PH, LLV dilatation, and mild bimetrical fistula dysfunction. So our plan is to close it, to close this fistula. Thank you. Uh, Shak, you heard the presentation by Dr. Ashish, and uh, Dr. Srija has much more spectacular images today morning. And uh, she is uh, presenting the live uh, echocardiogram because most of the information is there on the image only. So, uh, can you show the echo big, Srija? Yeah. Good morning. Am I audible? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, briefly taking you through the images, uh, live TE images in the lab. So, this is a zero degree uh, view which shows a, a dilated left atrium and left ventricle with a normally functioning mitral bioprocesses. We are already seeing a communication somewhere from the aortic root, which is opening into the left atrium. So on color interrogation, we are seeing a continuous high velocity flows which are entering into the left atrium from the aortic root. The mitral bioprocesses is functioning normally with a trickle of uh, leak. This is a 3D zoom image looking as viewed from the left atrial side, which shows uh, the left atrial exit of the fistula. <clears throat> Can you show the, use the cursor to show that? Oh. Yes. It is in 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock position, somewhere at around 2 o'clock position. Yeah, it, uh, cursor yeah, is, it is not moving actually. Point. Okay. Never mind. Somehow cursor is not uh, working. Cursor is not coming to the, yeah, okay, yeah. carry on. Okay, carry on, carry on, carry on. yeah, next picture. So uh, it's uh, now it's a two o'clock shack, somewhere two between two to three o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. So now we are seeing the color flows across in, in the fistula. Now it, we can see it's around the two o'clock, three o'clock position. The left atrial exit was measuring around eight millimeter. So he had seen clearly with a little bit more of a zoom. And on a 120 degree view, this is the uh, exit from the, the, the fistula from the non coronary sinus into the left atrium. Injector. And the aortic regurgitation, there's a very tiny whiff of aortic regurgitation, Inject nothing uh, major. So that is the fistula which is seen in the uh, 90 degree view. It's a zo zoomed image. The aortic a uh, side of the fistula was measuring around 10 millimeter. And on a 45 degree view, we can see the fistula opening there. This cursor is not moving. With the color flows, the fistula, uh, the aortic orifice of the fistula is from the middle of the non coronary sinus. 25 ml at 18, right? And that is the measurement from the aortic end. It's around 10 millimeter. So since it's 10 millimeter, the aortic end, we are targeting a device to cover the defect from the aortic end. This is a uh, live 3D image, which is showing again the fistula from the left atrial side. And we can see it from the aortic side. It's not a very Yeah, it's from the middle of the non-coronary cusp, uh, there is an orifice, which uh, Dr. Srija nicely showed that the entry point was almost close to 9.8, 9.9 millimeter, a little less than 10 millimeter. Mm -hmm. uh, so Shaq, what uh, we had till now done was, uh, we took an uh, I, uh, femoral artery and femoral venous access, and uh, the pulmonary artery pressure was 45 millimeter systolic when the iota was about 90 millimeters systolic. Uh, the, this is the this is the current hemodynamics. Mm, okay. uh, uh, so now, uh, how how will you uh, approach the situation, Shaka? I will. Very good. Yeah. So let me just ask uh, Gianfranco and then some of the panel members. Gianfranco, very briefly and quickly. Camera. Interesting, rare problem. Yeah, that's a very interesting uh, problem. Uh, thanks for showing us uh, this case. Uh, I cannot really uh, understand exactly how is the relationship of this uh, fistula compared to the to the coronary cusp. Uh, is that I mean the exit point? Is that uh, is that passing under the coronary cusp or above the coronary cusp? 
and probably not, it is not going to show be it on a long axis stand. region all right we will show that gian franco now actually yeah. on a long axis you can clearly see that it is from the aortic root uh, it is it is from the it's from the aortic root it's a continuous flow if it had been from the left ventricle to the left atrium it will be systolic flow whereas this is a continuous flow should you get a color across and uh, right word rotate you see yeah, that no the point is that yeah to understand yeah. the how the cusp is related to the to the fistula yeah. now if, show the if it is part of the, the, of the tunnel with... itself no, the, the, it is it was from the middle of the non coronary cusp it was well away from the leaflets i think uh, the the 3d picture this that is showing uh, it, uh, i think srija it was some 27 or 28 image uh, where you showed the it was in the middle of the you see now this is this is a beautiful picture this is now showing the left atrial side. Now, Dr. Srija is slowly tilting. You can see this is the aortic side. So, this is the, ah, the, exactly the pointer is on the aortic side. Srija, gently shift and show the cusps now. The, show the aorta in uh, on fast. Can you make the image bigger, uh, Shiva? Ah, yeah. Make it uh, larger. Put on zoom there. Ah, okay, the okay. Echo big. Echo big. Okay. Now, uh, ah, that, uh, okay. Srija, yeah. Uh, Okay, now that is actually in the middle of the non-coronary cusp. Should I rotate it again and get the leaflets for them? No, this is not a live reading. No, on fast the aorta. Just push it. Uh, your your rotation. They are correct, correct. Exactly. Little bit more. And now give more gains, then you will see the cusps better. Yeah, you can see that the, the aortic leaflets are little thin. So when we give more gain, there is a lot of uh, dirt around in the aorta. But it is in the middle of the non-coronary cusp and it is exiting. The cause of this fistula possibly was a weakened mitral annulus by the infective endocarditis and the surgeon operated immediately after treatment of the infective endocarditis. And in the long axis view, she was actually showing it so beautifully. The, the picture number 19, 20, 19. Uh, the, the, so this we can appreciate. The, you can see that basically there probably was like a perimitral root abscess. And the aorta is now entering into a sac. We can appreciate the aorta uh, below entering into a sac, and the sac is exiting into the uh, left atrium. Right now, we did uh, investigations, and the last so three. Shiva, the main question, uh, John Franco, I guess, is referring to is how much impact there will be of a device on the aortic valve leaflets. But uh, but since it was in the middle of the uh, uh, sinus uh, uh, yeah. sac. Our device is going to be sitting on the cup portion of the sinus and not going to be closer to the leaflets at all. So you, see, you see now here, in this particular image, you see the leaflet, the two commissures, the non-coronary, left yeah, coronary commissure. Do you comment? Yeah, da, Nageshwar, yeah. Yeah, Nageshwar, go ahead. Uh, Sak, good evening. Nice to see all of you. Uh, we had a similar situation. Shiva also knows last year we demonstrated that in a child with uh, pulmonary root to translocation in a complex uh, double outlet oh. right ventricle and you uh, this is uh, more or less uh, uh, similar picture big but uh, here advantage oh. for you is uh, we can actually we should close this there is no doubt about the indication because the amount of shunt oh. is quite significant inject 2580 uh, parallel leak uh, whatever it is hydrogenic uh, parallel leak from iota to la uh, whether you want to close the no. retrograde uh, or you want to close transeptally is the major challenge here I think slightly pull out, uh, pull out the probe. Pull out the probe. In order to assess the aortic function, you need to have constant TE which is there and the defect is far away from the leaflet. You, I don't think you will interfere that. You can go into little bit AP. of uh, the cusp of the, uh, above the cusp of the aorta. So we can actually close either go to the, from red go to the previous picture. or Conceptual puncture and Previous. then do it. The advantage okay. of yeah, Nageshwar, we've lost you. Yeah, uh, Shaq, I agree. Uh, I agree with uh, Dr. Nageshwar's point. We can close it, retrograde from the aortic root or anti-grade from transeptal. The advantage of doing it transeptal will be basically it's a sinus no. of valsalva fistula. And we have a fair amount of experience uh, of sinus of Valsalva fistulas that usually enter into right atrium and right ventricle being closed with a duct occluder because aorta is a high pressure and the other chamber is a low pressure. So a conical device fits in well. So our intention will be to try to put in a... Shiva. Yep. 
Yeah, hold on. Uh, Alain, I'm just going to ask Alain first because uh, he wants to comment as well. Alain. Yes, thank you. I think uh, I agree about the, the technical consideration that has been raised, but uh, we have had also a similar case like that. And my question uh, would be uh, our question at this time was how far are we uh, from the infection? Because uh, uh, this patient had, had a non localitis. When we consider um, putting a device, uh, of course, a pulmonary valve, uh, but other type of device in the patient who had a recent history of endocarditis, we want to put uh, uh, some time uh, away. So I wanted to ask uh, first uh, uh, if this patient, uh, uh, I mean, how far are we from the infection? And also, uh, is that the timing if we are to close uh, from the infection uh, to go ahead and uh, close this? Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Alain, uh, uh, Alain Fraze, uh, it is, uh, the infection uh, was in the month of June, uh, early June, and he was treated in early June. Following that, he underwent mitral valve replacement, and after the mitral valve replacement, he was continued on antibiotics. Last three and a half months, he has been afebrile, and all the blood infective markers were negative. Three okay, Shiva, uh, uh, carry on now, it shows what you... So, so we will, uh, as we were talking, uh, as Nageshwar was telling his uh, views, I took the aortic uh, root angiogram, show the first picture. This is in an AP projection. We can appreciate a large filling of the left atrium. We can appreciate the, the small protrusion from the non-coronary cusp just beneath the transesophageal echo probe. Then this was in an AP projection. You can also see the biocar valve, which is a Senjude valve, which hardly is seen just like a rim. The second one was in an RAO projection where we pushed the... I was, I was going to ask whether you were using the TOE probe as a marker. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 the, the TOE probe was subsequently pulled up. And uh, you can appreciate here, this is the, the fistulous entry point and uh, the, the, the flow into the left atrium. Now, uh, uh, what we are planning to do is, uh, actually, the, if it is a retrograde closure, we have to use a double disc device, but if it is an anti-grade closure, we can use like a conical device, like a duct occluder. Since uh, most of the world's uh, 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 experience with sinus of Valsalva aneurysm is using a duct occluder device, we also prefer to do a duct occluder device because it is smaller in its profile on the left atrial side. And uh, uh, naturally, we need to have a transeptal puncture. So as uh, we spoke to you, we had advanced the needle. Now we are live. So uh, this is going to be uh, echo-guided and fluoro-guided. We are coming down. Whilst, whilst you're doing that, there's a question from Sebastian about whether you would consider an M MFO occluder uh, deployed retrogradely or not. Okay, okay. Just uh, after the puncture, I will tell about, we discussed about a non-self-centering device such as an ADO2 or an MFO versus a self-centering device like a muscular VSD. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, or a yeah, duct occluder device, and we tend that. Uh, we, we finally decided. Can you sh rotate and show the puncture points, Rija? I'm indenting. You put the explain on the, on the indentation. Explain on the indentation. Yeah. No, I, okay. So, so the, you, are, you are able to see the indentation on both the echo big. Echo big? Yeah. Yeah. Are you able to see the echo? Yes, we can. OK. So I'm making a puncture. So I have entered the left atrium. So I'm pushing my mullein sheath deep inside. I'm withdrawing the. This is a. Seven French standard cook mullein sheath with the broken bro uh, needle BRK1 and uh, sister 5000 heparin in. 5000 heparin. So now I'll show the left atrial pressure. The aortic pressure now is show the hemodynamics big. Show the hemodynamics big. Okay. The aortic pressure is about a 90 systolic. He's under anesthesia. This is the left atrial pressure, which is a mean of about uh, 20, somewhere around 20 to 21. 
Can you see the hemodynamics there? Uh, yes, we can. Yeah. So the, 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 the next step will be, we will, uh, okay, the uh, Sebastian's uh, question about uh, usage of devices. Uh, the the ADO2 device as well as the Conar MF device, both are non-self-centering devices because they have got a tiny waste. Uh, so the waste, if suppose if it goes into one of the corner of this uh, 10 millimeter leak, sometimes it may so happen that the leak may not be fully be closed. So we wanted a, a self-centering, we wanted a self-centering device. So our preference will be either a muscular VSD device if you are going retrograde. But if you are going anti-grade, as I mentioned earlier, our tendency will be to uh, use a duct occluder device. So uh, here, yeah. I am exchanging this pigtail for yeah, Judkin's right coronary artery catheter. We probably will be uh, going back to the RAO view where, show me that RAO view and the previous fluoroscopic projection. So we will get into the same projection. This is I a have one question for Shiva. Yes, uh, Dr. Bharat. Uh, Shiva, my question to you was that what do you estimate as the length of this track? Uh, was, was, do you uh, have any concerns that ADO1 may not be of adequate length to take care of the length of the track? Okay. Now, show, the, show the echo big now. Small little penetration show, because show. one of the views... So, uh, uh, Bharat, he, now we are showing you live the echo. Uh, yeah, Srija, Srija. Yeah, this is the view I wanted to see, and I want to estimate the length of this track. Ah, Srija, measure the length between the entry point to the exit point. Yeah, it's somewhere around, uh, no, but that is, that is the transverse, Rija, the entry point to the exit point. Again, show the echo. Show the echo big. Echo alone big. Yeah. Rija, from the entry point to the exit point. Takes almost like a vertical diameter. Ah, that's, that's enough. Okay. Uh, okay, that is the exit. Uh, come down. Uh, little, little above. That, if you go to the middle of it. Yeah, Dr. Bharat, it's somewhere around 5 to 6 millimeters. But uh, if, suppose if I uh, give a pull on the device, Bharat, what, uh, what do you feel? Uh, give a fluoro. No, because of the length, I had a little bit of a concern. But I think if it's 5 to 6, you may just be able to have uh, both the ends well covered with the device. Yeah. Now, if we can make the fluoro bigger. Fluoro bigger. Shiva. Yeah, fluoro big. Fluoro store this and show the fluoro big. Show, run, run this movie. So now I'll show you live uh, uh, shack. We have entered the sack. And now I am advancing my right coronary catheter inside. I have made a loop of, OK. And, now, and that's a Judkins right and a Terumo wire. Yeah, termo, yeah, termo angled glide. Yeah, yeah, Terumo wire. So now on this side, I'm taking yeah, around, uh, it's a 20 millimeter snare through that mullein sheath that we have. Mullein sheath is recording around 21 millimeters of mercury mean uh, LA pressures. RA pressure was around 10. He has uh, some amount of pleural effusions, pericardial effusions and all. Okay, so now so here. If, if you're using an ADO1 device, and Bharat's con question or concern about the, about the length of the uh, connection, you could use the long shank Oclitec device then, couldn't you? Uh, long shank, yeah, yeah, that also should be uh, a yeah, yeah, po uh, possibility. Take it out and then. Ah, advance. You almost need a 40 millimeter snare. <laughs> yeah, advance. Okay. Now.
can you open it and uh, re entry and just a second uh, whilst you're trying to snare Bharat uh, are there can questions you, can from you? the attendees we can address it's a it's a little larger around 10 centimeter left atrium most of the questions have been asked uh, Shaq the only question which one of the attendees was wanting to know that do we have any concerns about conduction issues after the device I'm not sure exactly how is the, uh, how is this communicated with respect to the conduction yeah, it is possible, Bharat. Actually, the non-coronary cusp is actually on the right fibrous trigone, and hence, yeah, that is that is a that is a point yeah. that we have to think about. Uh, we we do we do uh, uh, have a concern about it. Uh, however, uh, there is uh, oh God, okay. Uh, the, however, the the we we have to uh, deploy it, and then we have to see what is the. It it is true that 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 concern is true. It is. Uh, I, I lost the Can I make uh, just a comment about the choice of the device? Um, yeah, go on, Alain. Yes, so uh, I, I think uh, I first I totally agree with you, Shaq, about the long uh, version of the of the Ocutec and also because of the proximal shapes that is uh, that will uh, match uh, uh, well the diameter uh, of the of the fistula. Uh, one one consideration with this fistula, it's it's very tortuous. I in the case we have had uh, the echo underestimated the length of the fistula, so it was uh, longer uh, because of the tortuous uh, root. Uh, and uh, and this is why we ended up using uh, non plazer vascular plug uh, in uh, in our case. Also because uh, we were quite close from the cusp, and we didn't want to have uh, this protruding uh, in the aortic side of the defect. Yeah. Uh, may, may I make a, a comment? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, exactly because the shape of the fistula is quite uh, complex. I would propose, uh, if it, you do agree, to make kind of uh, a sizing or shaping of the fistula by using a, a soft uh, balloon catheter that could be probably around 10 millimeters and then just inflate very um, gently uh, across the, the, this tract to have, a, to have the shape from inside and to exactly see if uh, there is any interference with the surrounding uh, structures. So, uh, Shaq, the question is how many uh, of the panelists would suggest a, uh, a balloon sizing of this fistula, given the information that this, uh, uh, get the uh, sheath, uh, given the information that this is post-infective endocarditis, little friable tissue, uh, so uh, would, uh, would, you, would you like to have a yeah. yeah, balloon so sizing, or would you like to go just with an echocardiographic assessment and oversize the device by maybe uh, two to three millimeters larger? So Gianfranco would go balloon sizing. Alain, what would you do? Well, uh, it really depends. My, my personal view in this, uh, uh, in this situation, uh, because my first intention device would be uh, non plazer vascular plug, and it's uh, not a, a very expensive uh, device, and it also has, uh, it's very soft, so it will allow uh, uh, to have, in case it works, we are fine. In case it doesn't work, it will also allow to have uh, a very accurate uh, idea of the shape and of the yeah. sizing uh, of, the, of the fistula. Uh, so I would do either uh, balloon sizing following the idea of Jean-Franco, but I agree with the concern in a very tortuous fistula. If you have a 90 degree angle, uh, I'm not sure the balloon sizing will provide also a very accurate description of the shape. Um, but then uh, you can also speculate that a soft device uh, would do the job. I would size this using devices. I wouldn't balloon size. So you're almost using the devices for sizing. 
uh, and rely on the echo images because of that concern about increasing its size. Is Dietmar with us? Um, uh, Dietmar, yes. Uh, yes, I hear you very well. Oh, good. Welcome. And so what do you think? Uh, balloon think size or I, not? I would, I would size it in any case because I have no other experience other than by sizing. And uh, I feel me more for comfortable to have a, a sized, uh, let me say, uh, uh, store. Lead. You know, could you follow? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Hi, Dietmar. It's nice to hear Hi. you. <laughs> I, I'm always happy to see you. I thought, I thought you had not logged in when I didn't hear your voice. <laughs> it's very unusual for D Dietmar to be quiet, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so what? Uh, the procedure is so great, I'm uh, astonished. So, uh, Shiva, on TUE, now that the sheath is through, are you going to reassess the color flow and see if that gives you some idea of the sizing? Yeah, Echo Big. Echo Big. And what French sheath was that? Just remind uh, me. This is an eight French sheath, Shaq. Eight. Because you have already decided what kind of uh, device you want to uh, use. The, uh, Dietmar, the discussion so, so far had been, uh, Sebastian discussed about a non-self-centering Conar MF device, which I was not happy to use because it may. It, I, I want a device that will be centered on the aortic exit, aortic orifice. That means the 10 millimeter orifice, I want to have a snug fit. So because yeah. of that, I was not very happy about MFO device. And the same principle probably goes on to the Amplitzer vascular plug 2 that was, uh, that was proposed by Alain Freys. As I told you earlier, my, uh, my, uh, 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 my uh, choice of devices should be self-centering. It should fill that aortic 10 millimeter entry point and that will be possible with either a muscular VSD device or a yes. ADO, ADO1 device. Now, having seen that it is a 10 millimeter orifice, Srija, is it any big now than what it was uh, previously? So, being a 10 millimeter, my original plan was to take a 1210 PDA device, 1210 ADO1 uh, device, yeah. but I am just wondering whether, I think that should be okay because the exit orifice is only uh, eight, and so I should be able to get a 1210. And in case if I fail, then I will again uh, recross and then try to put a 14 12. Now I have a 12 10 device. Oh, uh, Dietmar, what was your uh, thought process? You I, you I would prefer VSD, uh, VSD, muscular VSD uh, occluded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th that's true. Actually, muscular VSD device was another device that we strongly considered. Of course, it is a little less expensive device. That is one. And number two, since it is from a uh, uh, very high pressure channel to a low pressure channel, we felt that it should be okay to uh, uh, use. I think uh, it, yeah. But, uh, but you have more experience with this. But I, I would use from, from the security point of view and we use, uh, muscular VST occluder. Yeah. The, Dr. Bharat also raised the issue of the length of the sheath being not uh, fully adequate and hence. Uh, uh, length of the device being not fully adequate and whether it will it will create a uh, difficulty in uh, sound French sheath, whether it will create a difficulty in uh, the exit orifice coming into the left atrium, uh, sound French sheath. So you, uh, uh, Shiva, we, yes, Shiva, we missed uh, the you attached the device uh, and it's the twelve ten, is it? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, so it's a twelve ten yeah. PDO device shack. And I tried to load it onto a small six French sheath, which obviously is not compatible because the 1210 needs a seven. So I opened another seven French short introducer. And now I am loading it. Okay. So this is a 1210 ADO one device. Flush it, sister. The, the, the question is that this is such an unusual case. Yeah. Why uh, why are you not uh, for balloon sizing the defect? It can I can't hear you, Bharat, uh, with the signal probably, but uh, oh, why I'm not sorry, balloon sizing? The concerns really uh, the with, uh, yeah the concerns really with uh, recent history of infection whether uh, balloon will increrease the size. But, uh, but, uh, so it's a but long shot, it is. It is almost three months now. Uh, and he's can you can you come to non coronary? Non coronary. Yeah, uh, so Bharat, Bharat. In general, uh, in a, in an uh, infected uh, tissue, 
sometimes if it is very soft, I can enlarge it a uh, little larger and larger by putting in a, uh, a balloon. Of course, you, you can always say that we can use a very soft balloon like a tie shack and have a pressure monitored and not exceed maybe about uh, 0.5 to 1 atmospheres. Now, I'm, I'm trying out with uh, with uh, duct occluder 1. You Shiva, can we make the fluoro bigger? Fluoro bigger or echo bigger? Because echo is going to be more informative, I thought. Oh, okay, then, uh, yeah, all right then, because we can't see much. Okay, can you put a pigtail on to the iota? Just a second. I will get a parallel pigtail into the iota so that I will have a... Mr. Why? So we have got the aortic retention skirt into the uh, ascending iota, a short distance from the okay. So this is the Should land. I have a comment to the uh, PDA, uh, the yeah. Edo one. Yeah. Yeah. Would the Edo one a little bit too short? Uh, to the unmeasured length of the uh, defect. The yeah, very yeah. good question, Shiva. Uh, uh, Deepma, we answered that earlier on. <laughs> yeah, do, uh, actually, do, Dr. Bharat raised that issue, uh, Deepmar. And uh, can you show me on RAO? RAO. So now I'm. Could it be marked out? That Shri is my question. Srija, can you show the device? Rotate and show. Okay, we are we are coming closer to the orifice make a check make a test angio here uh, can you see the device that is uh, coming close yeah. to the yeah so yeah. when you do the test angio if you make the angio big and then both go back to echo big i will do that i'll do that uh, give a small injection about 15 ml at 18 rate uh, make the make the uh, angio bigger Okay. Okay, I have a little bit more length to go. I even on the Srijak concentrate on the device. Show the device continuously. Now you can make echo bigger. Echo bigger. Okay, Srijak, are you able to show me the device like right rightward rotate and get the fistula now with the color? Okay. Further right. Okay. With the color compare, can you put it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, can we make another angiogram? Make the angio bigger? It's better. Okay. Ready? Huh? Okay, still I have to I have come to come a little bit more. Yeah. So be there and second. You feel any resistance at yeah, all? Yeah, 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 yeah. Some amount of resistance. So now I will I will do one thing. I will I will start deploying at this point. And and make echo bigger. Yeah, I'm seeing a waste on the device. That's a good sign. I have made okay. Now, uh, sh uh, uh, we, we will do one angio. Yeah, true. I will try to go into the non-sinus itself so that I get some small. Difference. Okay, ready for injection? Give a good amount, 20 ml at. Twenty ml. Yeah, there is a waste of the device. It looks like I have probably exited into the left atrium. It is looking uh, like a miniature muscular VSD device now. Uh, show the... Uh, so, Gianfranco, what do you yeah. think? I think, I mean, uh, the, the shape of the device is quite okay, but there is a quite a significant uh, aortic regurg. I, not... Uh, I, so, there is some interference with the... With the uh, can you... Know, can you can you can you get it on a, a long axis view and see the aortic regurgitation stage? Yeah. 
Yeah. You look so leafless ah. with the echo. Lot of colors. Yeah. There is a What's there is a lot of color. Mm. Here, I think the color gains are too high. Oh, I didn't change anything. Ah. Redu uh, once you go on to the color, reduce the color gains. It's everywhere color is there. Reduce the color gains. Reduce. Did you catch the? No, it's too much of color gains. Just keep on reducing the gains till. No, your your scales so are going very low. Scales, uh, yeah. Scales, scales and gains uh, also. There, there is a gain button. Yeah. Gain. The scale is very low, 67 centimeters per second. Is yeah. Five. Reduce the gains. Re keep on reducing the gain. Correct. Okay. 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 In a little bit more. Also, do a, a split screen. Uh, echo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, little bit, little bit also you can reduce the color gains. Actually, even now the color. Now the question from is, an, from Anjo, the the uh, is verge looks very uh, eccentric. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So I go with be a bit difficult to. See. Maybe you have caught the valve for them. Okay, can you uh, no the valve leaflet, the posterior leaflet. Now uh, can you Srija just to show the leaflets better? Uh, okay, that the leaflet that is what you are seeing posteriorly is either the left coronary or the non coronary Srija, can you right word and left word rotate and skip showing the can i go to a short axis yeah, yeah. You can we see a short axis yeah, short axis yeah. so i think that cusp is caught non coronary cusp is cusp. caught yeah. right yeah okay it's it's fully caught into the fully caught yeah. huh? okay go inside little bit okay yeah we are not able to see can you color now Yeah. Okay. So what yeah. uh, what uh, I will I will recapture the device and then we will re we will see how things look. Okay. Now I have gone into the iota the again. Now we are able to see the leaflet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's disappeared. Okay. So now. Uh, yeah. This was my concern at the very yes. beginning. In okay. some ways. Okay. So can you can uh, can you now get a long axis? Probably now Alain Frey's uh, suggestion of uh, uh, a softer device, uh, like a vascular plug. If I could suggest something, probably I would go for the idea of shark with a long shark, uh, shark shaft uh, uh, occlutec, but uh, implanted uh, in the opposite way with the with the with the umbrella on the. Um, uh, yeah, on the aortic side, ventricular no, on the ventricular side and the shaft and the and the shaft on, on on the aortic side, because then you will have no uh, discs on the no disc on the in the aorta, uh, while a kind of retention mechanism in, anyway. If you do it that way, you'd really have to oversize it quite a bit to stop the shank from being pushed into the. Srija, can you show me where my uh, is my cusp in the right coronary cusp or non coronary cusp? The the pictil. Pictel catheter. Pictel is in the non coronary. So I will try to rotate it and get it into the. Was in the right coronary. Uh, no, right, uh, yeah, I want to enter the right coronary. Yeah, now it's in the right coronary. I, I want to enter the non coronary. Is it right only? Hmm. Is, is Nageshwar back? Because I think he had to go. Nageshwar, are you back? No. Anna, any further thoughts at the moment from what you've yeah, seen? Yeah, so I, I, I would now definitely go with... Uh, show, show me the leaflet uh, with, now. With the vascular plug two. Um, yeah. And uh, we, you, can try, you can try it retrogradely uh, because it's a very soft device and even if you cut the leaflet, you, you can pull it uh, a bit, probably. So without, are you able to uh, see the leaflet now? The yeah, yeah, I'm seeing some leaflet the, the leaflet. But what? Uh, uh, no, I'm trying to open the device. And and what size would you pick, uh, Anna? Yeah, can you, can you give another injection? Three, four millimeter above, because this is uh, the, 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 the disc are all the same size, so uh, I, I think the defect was measured Ready? at 9, 10 millimeter. I would go with a 12 or with a 14. Uh, I think the, the length of the 14 is 2 millimeter longer than the length uh, yeah. of the 12. Now uh, it looks so good, Shiva. 
I am trying to Shiba. open the disc yeah, now. Shiba, now there's no aortic regurgitation on yes. that, Andrew. Looks good. Okay. I have got more device uh, pulled in. Uh, now it is fantastic. It yeah. looks uh, well on the yeah, the Leaflets are working. Now yes. it's a question of working out whether the leak or residual flow is acceptable or not. Yeah, sorry, this is also my other concern. You know, I brought the, the tortuous shape of this fistula, and now you have implanted a, a rigid device inside, uh, which is uh, larger than the fistula. Uh, but uh, the orientation of the device may not cover uh, all Can the... Can you give system. another uh, 20? Okay. Uh, no. uh, Alain, uh, now you look at the pictures. Uh, you see that basically I am... Uh, my my uh, cable is now uh, uh, pulling the left atrial uh, skirt. So if I release my cable, there will be a little bit more memory retention by the device you see the 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 position looks okay to me can you show me a 3d on that uh, the left atrial surface let us see how it looks ah, now make it uh, no, no, that, correct correct make it lighter in uh, reduce the gain okay the part of the problem shiva is going to be uh, t making that judgment of how, how much residual flow to accept okay and if on release the device doesn't uh, align itself and there is still a lot of flow, uh, how are you going to retrieve it? Uh, those are the sort of questions to help decide. Yeah. Uh, in terms of stability of the device shack, uh, what we have is uh, yeah, 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 good waste formation, so the device is stable. The, the aortic skirt and the left atrial skirts are well aligned. Uh, now, s I have given 7,000 heparin total, 2,000 initially when I took the vascular puncture and then after the septal puncture, 7,000, uh, 5,000. So, it's, it's, a, it's a good amount of uh, heparin that's going on. Can you show me the color now, Srija? Color. Col uh, color. Yeah. It is uh, not very bad, uh, Shaq. You just keep watching there. Uh, you show on a long axis also, Srija. I'm going to make an angiogram parallelly. Show the, show the angio, show the angio bigger. Ah. Yeah. There is... Look, that looks great. I think it would close. Yeah, it, I, th I think it should, uh, because the, the device probably will, uh, will get loosened a little bit more mm -hmm. when I release the cable. And uh, moreover, I... See, obviously, I cannot go m further larger than this device because this device itself is having a good waist. And, uh, and uh, the second thing is the orifice would not have been perfect circle. It would have been subtle oval. And so it, it might take a little time for the device to uh, mold itself into that. Can you pull a little bit of the livery cable and then make an angiography again? Uh, uh, you mean? Uh, yes, yes, in this way. Okay. Yes. Uh, color. Yes. Now Col an, ad an additional. It's distorting it, isn't it? Otherwise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> color, uh, Srija. Uh, the uh, the color the leak. No. So, Shaq, I feel that if I if I use any sort of non-fabric device like vascular plug and all, still there will be same amount of flow because vascular plug may not have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, to me, the main question really is uh, whether you ac accept this leak and possible hemolysis later or whether you go for a double disc device. Alain, you were going to say something. Yes, I think it's a great implantation and uh, I agree that uh, at this point, uh, uh, you, you certainly the should consider releasing the device. The I share the consideration oh. uh, about the risk of hemolysis and this is why uh, additional reason I would have used uh, uh, the uh, soft uh, device. Now but, you could put uh, a color again. Where you are now, uh, it looks uh, uh, a good result. And additionally, uh, this is also why I would have uh, agreed with Shaq because the other option would have been a longer uh, uh, ADO uh, because uh, you would maybe match a little bit better uh, the shape uh, of the. Um, 
uh, of the fistula. And also the Oculitec is a bit softer than the Amplatzer um, uh, duct occluder. But I think it's, it looks like an acceptable result. Show me the color now. It is I'm less uh, uh, color, big, make the color bigger. I think uh, it'll, uh, it should go away because the position of the device seems good. Color compare. Yeah, so, the problem is we cannot predict yes. uh, which way the device will rest. Yeah. Uh, and that's the difficulty in decision making. Yeah. But uh, but uh, but uh, uh, changing it into a muscular VSD, uh, see, the, the yeah. already already my left atrial disc is a flared out shack, like more like a mini uh, muscular device. Because you see that there was a, there was a, some amount of flaring of the device. Can you show me the uh, device uh, enlarged, zoomed? Mag it, maximum mag, okay. And show me the device in profile. Uh, go to, uh, just slightly pull out the cable. Uh, no, no, the, the other direction, is, other direction. Uh, in yeah. such time you are on such a stiff cable, mm. it may not be uh, very easy to find out as to the alignment of the device with respect to the fistula tract. And you will never know yeah. till such time it is released. Yeah. So as to how it is going to align. I, I agree. Actually, uh, so I, I, I am releasing now. So let it's let done. let me let me see the. Can you Srija, Can you see the uh, fish the flow? Actually, there is not too much of change, uh, Bharat. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, in fact, one more thing that I forgot to tell you. I used a Trevisio cable uh, yeah. in order to in order to get some flexibility. Yes, uh, that yeah, color that looks much more encouraging to yeah. me yeah. if you can make the echo big. Yeah. Echo big? Echo big? Becomes, yeah. Becomes uh, Srija, there is too much of gains now. You see, everywhere it's there is color. Flushed, no? No, I, uh, okay. You are flushing, no? Yeah. No, but reduce the color scales. I think uh, the color gains, it is It's a lot of... It, it's because of color gains going up. Keep keep yeah, cutting yeah. down the gains. Ah, now only looks it's correct. Good. It comes. Yeah, so that close. looks much better. Yeah. Super. I'm your fan. Brilliant case. Uh, so, Bharat, uh, last two or three minutes. Any questions from the attendees that we need to answer? Time is over. Uh, so one of the one of the questions was. Uh, what has happened to the? Is there any uh, mitral regurgitation after di after? Uh, uh, show the show the, the show the mitral valve. The the, this is the mitral valve now. It looks uh, it looks good, Bharat. One of the attendees wanted to know whether there has been any. It's the same pre-existing uh, mitral. Bharat, are you able to see the live picture? There is not much of mitral regurgitation. Yeah, it looks good. That's good. And, and what it's getting the, better uh, and better. And uh, Shiva, what has happened to the pulse pressure? Okay, the, so show the hemodynamics big. What I'll has happened to the LA pressure? LA pressure is now about uh, 10. 17. Oh, no, no, it's 17. I have given a, 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 a 5, 6 angios also, Bharat. And, uh, yeah. and uh, aortic pressure, show the aortic pressure. It's, a, it's, a, it's around uh, 16 to 17 LA pressure. And uh, this is the pulse pressure, not... So diastolic pressure increased 10, 20 millimeter of mercury. Yeah, some. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and can can somebody put a stethoscope on the chest to find out whether the murmur is still? <laughs> sure, sure. Okay. I, uh, Bharat, it is going to be very difficult to find a stethoscope. Yeah, yeah it is not. It is. <laughs> it has. It is. It's in the hospital's museum, and so we will try to retrieve one. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, uh, Srija, once again, uh, can you show the final uh, color and uh, the final 3D yeah, pictures? Yeah, because we've got to go to Frankfurt. Uh, yeah. Uh, and and final Echo big. Out Echo out big. Out. Fantastic case. What have you done to uh, make free uh, to make the cast free? Uh? Uh, see, the, the the first time when what happened was uh, I put in the aortic entire retention skirt opened in the ascending aorta and I was dragging back. The second time, I did not open. Can you show me that picture again? Yes. Uh, yes. Show the previous uh, fluoroscopy. Uh, 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 
uh, make the fluoro big? Okay, previous, previous, previous. Uh, go, go, couple. before, before, before. Correct. So they are basically, I got the, I, I, uh, I got the disc inside the non-coronary cusp. My pigtail is now sitting in the right coronary cusp. So I, I got the entire device opened within the cup of the non-coronary cusp. The previous one, what I did was I opened it in the ascending aorta and I was dragging it all the way down. Maybe that was wrong. I thought that the distance within the non-coronary cusp is too short for me to manipulate, but then finally, this is the previous one. Can you show? Ah, now you see that I am actually sitting in the non-coronary cusp, but my, my device is only opened like a small ball. Yes. Uh, so, I so there is no regurge. Uh, there, and then slowly we opened it. Can you show two frames before the previous deployment? The previous deployment. Previous. Previous. One more. One more. See here I have actually I am coming full disk yes, open. That was, a, that was a mistake. Yeah, that okay. was a mistake. In fact, here I am, uh, my cusp is, uh, the, my pigtail is also sitting in the non-coronary cusp and I am yeah, dragging yeah, it, yeah, I am dragging it all the way down. Yeah. Probably yeah. I trapped the entire non-coronary cusp in this method. Yeah. Okay, okay, Shiva. Very well done. Absolutely brilliant. Excellent. Case. Very case. rare okay. one and uh, very nicely uh, demonstrated. Thank so you. Thank you very much again. Thank and, you. And uh, Frankfurt already, so we'll come back to you later on. Sure. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the opportunity.